Thank you, Coach Alice. Uh, it's really an honor to be here tonight. Um, without the support of my uh, beloved friends and past and present, um, I don't know if, if I really could uh, have accomplished as much as I did. Um, coming here after high school, I wasn't able to get into a four-year school, like Brian said for himself. Um, uh, I was fortunate enough to be coached by the legendary Ron Alice, and uh, who really uh, set me on a path to success in track and field. Um, and I'm truly grateful for him and my friends uh, for all their support. And thank you all for coming. Escorting uh, Chuck McFerrin is Casey Crook. Casey uh, basically reshaped the Viking baseball program, has made history last year by breaking the all-time uh, win record formerly held by a, a, another legendary coach, uh, Joe Hicks. Uh, uh, Casey is currently has 533 victories and was elected into the Hall of Champions in the year 2015. And uh, one of the processes when you sit down and deal with a man that you've known most of your adult life, uh, you, I think you have to think about what you do when you start presenting that person. I believe it is difficult to give proper praise to a person who has so many accomplishments in his life. Charles Chuck McFerrin is one of those outstanding leaders. He was a scholarship athlete to the University of California at Berkeley. He came back to Long Beach and served in the Long Beach Unified School District at Jordan High School and as a coach and a teacher. He took the uh, Jordan Panthers to the CIF in 1976. Then later on, he will move to Millican High School where he'll serve as the activities director there, and in 1983, he arrived at Long Beach City College, uh, serving as Associated Men's Student Advisor. Chuck begins uh, his term as the athletic director at Long Beach City College in 1989. I think the major accomplishment in his tenure, beside many others, is the fact that he is the founder of this Hall of Champions that you're at to date. Yeah. <laughs> Under his tutelage, his teams and coaches at Long Beach City College won three national championships and won 23 state championships. During his tenure, he provided great leadership and direction to the athletic program that had not been present before. Uh, just recently, Chuck was inducted as, uh, into the El Camino Hall of Fame. Um, and in addition to his responsibilities as AD, he served as a referee for the NC2A, I believe for 21 years. And he still serves uh, the Pac-12 Conference and he works as a replay official in the boxes now, as such. He works with a close friend who's sitting at the table over here, uh, our past Dean of Student Affairs, uh, John Philpaw. He does the work on the replay set 
with Chuck for the Pac-10. In that process, I would just like to recognize and present Chuck McFerrin as the inductee to the Long Beach City College Hall of Champions. And I might point out he was a unanimous choice by, by vote in the committee this year. Chuck? Yes, go Bears. Um, I love those track athletes. Uh, Mike took Bridgewater's time, and I'm going to take the next ones. So um, you guys are great. We're going to have more track guys here. Um, first of all, just thanks to the committee for selecting me to this honor. Um, you know, at the stage of life that I'm at, uh, it's just nice to be remembered. And... Uh, you know, we're, uh, we, th we threw a big, a big uh, just rager party in our backyard a few months ago, and uh, at the stage of life that I'm at, my neighbors didn't even know it happened. So, but uh, it's sure nice. <laughs> it's, it's sure nice to be here. I, I certainly appreciate it. Um, I'm also very pleased to, to see the state of uh, athletics, physical education, kinesiology under the leadership of Karen Kane and Randy Tutor. I think we've got some really good stuff going on right now. You know, I had a great experience as a teacher and a coach and administrator at both the high school, uh, Jordan and Millican High Schools before I got here and at the community college level. But I'll have to say that my last 14 years here at City as the men's athletic director was at the top. Working with great administrators such as uh, Wells Sloniger and John Philpaw, they made, they made life easy for us to really uh, do the things we needed to do. And the great coaches that we had, uh, you know, they were, like it's already been mentioned, they all won conference championships and most won state championships, and some won national championships. That's pretty easy to be a, a men's athletic director when you got that kind of performance going on with your, your coaching staff. And of course, working alongside of uh, Mickey Davis, who was the women's athletic director. Mickey was, uh, congratulations to you, Mickey. I mean, well deserved. <clears throat> I think we did good. I think we did better than good. Uh, actually, I only remember one issue in which you and I ever had a problem with. And I think you probably know what it was. It was a budget issue. And, uh, but you know, I think I'm gonna take a line that Paul Chafe used here when talking about his relationship with Jake. Was I think it was just a psychological issue. I think you were psycho and I was logical. But uh, <laughs> we, we, did, we did get through it. And uh, I should probably be more careful than that because she gets the mic after me. <clears throat> I was very proud of how we all pulled together, accomplished much, and I think we were really true to that saying uh, that there's no I in team. We really did pull together as a group. The icing on the cake, though, was the opportunity to develop the Hall of Champions. Again, it's been a totally team thing. I mean, I'm getting some credit here, but trust me, it was a lot of a lot of people on deck uh, to, make, to make this go like it's gone. Just to give you a, a quick little bit of Hall of Champions history, I'll try to be brief because I remember the very first Hall of Champions we had, we led off with one of our legendary uh, Long Beach City College icons, Del Walker. I figure if we're gonna start the Hall of Champions, we're gonna start it with the man. And so we had Del Walker be our first inductee. And I had, in, we had 12 that year, that was a big number. And I would cautioned them all to be very, uh, you know, kind of brief and um, get, get things said. Well, Dell, God bless him, he started to go through his life. Well, he was 90. 
And so there was a podium, there was a stage and there was a, some steps and I walked over by the steps and, and little by little I was creeping up the steps trying to get to the podium to try to slow him down because after about 10 minutes and he was only supposed to take five or six, he was at the sixth grade. And uh, so finally he, he cracked a joke and everybody laughed and I dashed for the podium, stood right next to him and said, Dell. We need to wrap this up. <laughs> and he graciously did that. He left out the last probably uh, 60 years of his life. Um, but I know how it can be with long speeches, and I'm maybe starting to go there. Uh, <laughs> so how do we get there tonight? Tonight we're inducting the 189th Hall of Champions inductee. And this all began with a conversation, a coffee conversation in year 2000 with two just tremendous guys who were involved in athletics here. Bill Smitherin, who was a counselor that, that worked a lot with the athletes and counseling them. And another fellow named Keith Cordes, who played here for the great Jim Stanglin teams and went on to play with Jim Owens up at Washington and was very instrumental at Cal State Long Beach in their programs. And so when Larry Riseby came, Keith got involved, and we really had some things rolling. And we said, we we're just talking, probably at a coffee conversation, and he said, you know, Long Beach City College has a Hall of Fame. Uh, why don't we have a, a Hall of Fame for athletics? And uh, so with help and guidance from Jenny Baxter, the foundation director, and a, a wonderful lady named Blanche Brewster Kennedy, who I think was the president at the time, we all kind of pulled together and the Hall of Champions was birthed. Um, and that first Hall of Champions Executive Committee was really a workhorse committee. They really sat down and, and did a lot of things that are still with us today. And actually, uh, I believe that there are uh, five of them off of that committee, although I haven't seen. Is Susie Atwood here? She was supposed to be. Susie was on that committee. I'd like these people to stand and just uh, hold your applause and uh, we'll recognize them at the end. These were some of the people on that very first committee that formulated uh, this Hall of Champions. And Mickey's already standing in the back. And we have Donna Prindle, who was on that committee and very instrumental. Will Shaw, I know Will's here. I think. Will has, stay standing, Will. I know it's tougher on you these days, but uh, stay standing. And uh, I think Will, I was checking with him today, I think he, uh, he only missed one Hall of Champions of all of them, and that was only because he was on a cruise. But uh, he's, been a, he's been a real uh, workhorse. Uh, John Philpaw is the other one who's here that was on that original committee. So thanks to all of those. Give them a round of applause. They're part of this, very big part of this committee. There were also some great Long Beach City College icons on that committee, Bill Barnes, Tom Clark, Sam Demas, Bill Millington, Bill Smitherin, Keith Cordes, just tremendous people that, that uh, contributed to the development of this. Uh, they had to work on things like uh, what, what, how somebody eligible uh, and banquets, uh, food, who's the caterer, who are the servers, who's going to do the decorations. A guy named Jerry Carter was just famous for helping us with those original decorations. And then choosing the inductees. They did an awful lot of work. They literally built the Hall of Champions. When you walked into this, into this gymnasium, if you go back far enough, uh, when you came through the outer doors, at one time, that was out on the, out on the deck. And so uh, we worked together with some contractors to expand the, the front of the gymnasium foyer and take it out, take, move, the, move the old doors out, create some cabinet space, put in some tile flooring, and uh, really, I think the group decided on some nice things. So uh, I'll never forget and never will be able to pay the debt for all that they did. So here we are 15 years later. It gives me great pleasure that our students can walk through this foyer out here and look at these plaques. They can see success. They can be encouraged. And you know, I was worried about it at one time that there might be a graffiti problem with it. 
but the custodians have told me that the students really, they don't mess with it. Which, you know, in this day and age, you have to kind of think is a blessing almost because of the way things are. But I think it's that respect that they have for their fellow classmates and all of the accomplishments that they see there. If you could take the time, and I'm gonna name a few things here, but every, one, every plaque out there is a great story. And I had the great pleasure to be involved with about the first 173 of those and get to know them a little bit better. What a, what a good thing that was for me. But you'll find 17 Olympians out there, 10 Long Beach City College coaches who have, who have been inducted into the California Community College Hall of Fame. You'll find 21 NC2A Division I coaches You'll find 27 people who played professionally in the NFL or the ma major leagues, not minor leagues, the major leagues, the NBA, the PGA, uh, and numerous track athletes, as you've seen a few today, that hold state, national, uh, uh, world records, record setters. But also you'll find people out there who, uh, during the era of World War II, uh, were Bronze Star recipients, were Marine Corps and Legion of Merit recipients, Purple Heart recipients. I was very touched, probably one of the most touching moments I remember was at an emeritus induction when a fellow named Hank in, and it was a colonel in the, in the Marine Corps, talked about how he was playing football as a freshman and everybody on the team knew that the end of that season where they would probably be in a few months, they'd probably be at Camp Pendleton ready to go to war. And I, you know, it just gives me shivers to think about when I went through college I mean, I, I experienced the Cuban, Cuban Missile Crisis, but you know, that was nothing. These guys knew where they were headed within months, and that was big time stuff, but uh, a whole different world for them. So you can see why I'm very proud to be associated with, included in those plaques out there on the wall. Um, long live Long Beach City College. Uh, we, thank you. We, we need these community colleges. I'm gonna preach here for just a second. Uh, I needed one when I came out of high school. I didn't have a clue. Uh, I'm a big fan of what the community college brings to the educational process. You know, other than the elementary school where we learn about 90 plus percent of everything that's important in life, uh, the community college, I believe, fulfills a very, fills a very valuable slot uh, in our state educational plan. Uh, not always, but often our students come, uh, they're the first in the family to go to college. It hasn't even, maybe even been talked about by their family. They may have financial constraints. They've been lacking the push, really. Maybe the parents are saying they'd rather have them go to work. Uh, but they come to college. This is the place they can come to. And we provide that path that takes them to a much better place in their life. So. That's why I'm a big fan of the community college. At this time, I would like to recognize the very important people in, in my family, and they're over here in these tables. So I've got some uh, family members here, and I would please like for them to rise. I'd like, I would just like, however, for the, for the Dodger fans to rise, please. Uh, those Cub fans can stay seated. So there you go. Let's have you guys stand up. Everybody over here as part of the family, I'd like to, my wife is going to coach them up right now, but our family have some grandsons here and a great grandniece and grandnephew. Uh, we're looking at future Vikings, I'm, I think, here. This, this McFerrin, thank you, you guys can sit down. This McFerrin family, this McFerrin family is very connected to Long Beach City College. As a matter of fact, uh, our three sons and our daughter began at Long Beach City College when they were like three years old. Between three to five, Judy, my wife, would take them over to the Child Study Center at the Pacific Coast Campus. And that's what kicked them off to a real solid foundation. And actually this logo behind me was done by my son who was an art major that went to Cal Poly from, they, all of our kids went to City College. They, we were fortunate enough they were all uh, President Scholar winners. And Doug, who went on to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, designed this logo and has been with us ever since. Um, 
So anyway, my thanks to Long Beach City College and how it's affected my family's life and honored me tonight. Thank you very much. We're going to stay with the theme of athletic administrators. She's coming, and let me tell you something. The lady I'm about to introduce, Mickey Davis, Hall of Famer, 2016, um, I guarantee you she's moved faster earlier in her career. <laughs> she, and some of you think you know, you don't know all of it. She is, if you take a look, and I hope you open your program, and you look at the accolades and look at the places she's been inducted as a Hall of Famer, every place she's been and everything she's done, which ought to tell you a little something. And I'm going to touch just on a couple of things that I think are important because the speeches, as you know, how they are. But I think it's significant that you know that she came just about the same time Chuck did, and you know what, you just heard what Chuck has meant to Long Beach City College. But Mickey was brought at the time that we were implementing Title IX. And for those who don't know anything about the compliance issues with Title IX, that is not easy, okay? Um, and I think if you saw her background that you take a look at her resume, um, there are so many people today in athletic administration who weren't athletes, were not coaches, and don't understand what a coach does every day. You just had Chuck with his background. I'm about to show you somebody who has the experience, had the knowledge, and implemented legality and made things happen at Long Beach City. You can see what was accumulated during the time that she was here and how the sports program was honored. And you know, one of the things as you can see by the community college, she's been inducted to that Hall of Fame. Let's talk a little bit about her as, as an athlete. You know, how many people are part of the Olympic staff how many people have been a pioneer in initiating their sport into the colleges and universities? I might add, for those of you who had a chance, naturally, I'm watching whether you are, I hope that you did, watch what happened in Rio in Brazil at the Olympic Games. We talked about the United States coming back with, in just track and field, 35, 36 medals. But if you take a look at the impact of what Title IX has done for women and athletics, look at the women's teams, not just individuals in the non-revenue sports, individual sports, but the team sports. We dominate. We have a system now that provides chances to have your education paid for. And if you have a daughter, a granddaughter, or somebody in the family, get them involved in sport because you can get your education assisted. And the lady that we're inducting is someone that implemented this here at Long Beach City College. As an administrator, her leadership was second to none. Um, and I can go on and on and on, but if you look at her relationships, not just with the coaches that were under her charge, but her ability to communicate with the athletes that were in the sports, it was personal. 
She was there. She went to the games. She was a part of it. She was a supporter. And she had a clear-cut communication with the administrators above her. She made a tremendous difference at Long Beach City College. She understand and understood coaches. He let them do their job and get out of the way and just give them support. She did that. She found solutions during the time she was here. She handled issues with grace. The bottom line, if I could say anything is, is her decisions were always for the betterment and the good of your program. If you get that kind of leadership backing you as a coach, you say thank you every day. Um, it's you, one of the things that I think that's important is that she combined during her time here, the women's program was singled out for their achievements both athletically and what they did academically. She's a Hall of Famer in almost everything. But one of the things you don't know is she's one of three people in South Carolina who were chosen to be three of the best female basketball players ever. Okay. If you're a pioneer and you're going to be on an Olympic committee and you go back every year to the NC2A and provide them with what it takes to promote your sport, so much is owed to her by the people who suit up and play softball to this day. And there are a couple other things. Choices of coaches. One of her choices that she brought to Long Beach City College is going to be honored here in another two or three minutes. Mauricio, one of the great soccer coaches around. She brought him here. And the one that everybody knows, who's a Hall of Famer here, is Patty Gasso. She lit this place up. in softball. And then, I guess she was a pretty good choice. This past spring, she just won another NC2A title World Series in women's softball after winning two more. That's three in the last six, six years. Unbelievable and who she picked. She helped me. We had a combined staff in track and field. And the men worked with the women. This is kind of a special thing with me because I started with five girls in this town long before you could get scholarships in the 60s. And the only thing you could do is be in a club and then do a lot of fundraising. Shows you what has happened. And you know what? Her choice also helped us. Denise Ripley came in, part of our program, and helped in the distance area and so forth on the women's side. And ultimately, you know, took one of my coaches, Dan Ripley. I, I don't know what, I wasn't responsible for that. But um, shows you. Anyway, uh, I want to introduce to you a very special woman, along with Chuck, led this program to where it is today. And they're the creators and the people that made this happen. Mickey Davis, Hall of Fame, 2016. Thank you, Ron, and thank you. In the words of my famous Southern grandmother, this is a fine night. <laughs> It's such an honor to be hanging around with you folks who are being inducted tonight. For the rest of our lives, we're going to hang around together right out there. And um, it's such a pleasure. Uh, my partner in 
we, what we like to think was uh, constructive. Let's make some changes for the best. Let's get rid of this, boom, and the other one going boom, trying to make a difference. I call it the power of the point, and I think that's what Chuck and I had, was the power of the point. We put both our hands together and made a point. You can knock down steel walls with the power of the point. And uh, coming here was due in part to one of Title IX's angels, and that is Donna Prindle. Stand up, Donna Prindle, you made the difference. She doesn't like to think so, but she did. And being here at Long Beach City College with some of the most wonderful coaches and personalities and people who knew what student athletes needed and people who knew what it took to win, I, I don't th I'd put this group of coaches up against any group of coaches in the whole United States, top to bottom program, four year, you're wonderful. Thank you all. You gave everything you had and more. And I appreciate it because it's the result of what goes on in these halls out here and on those fields and in this gym and everywhere a student athlete gives his and her heart to this college. Some people leave their heart in San Francisco. I leave mine at Long Beach City. And hopefully, Randy, you can do with whatever you need with that heart. Okay. Uh, I think we're in wonderful hands. Uh, I look back at the leadership that Chuck and I had with John and Wells. Thank you both so much. Uh, you were exactly what we needed to be our guides and to bring us together. I think the moment that Chuck and I um, really had our paths come together didn't have a thing to do with the athletic office. I don't quite remember the budget thing, but my calculator was always 32% off <laughs> anyway. Uh, but I do remember us cleaning out some of the parts of the gym, up, up high in the parts of the gym that had 1927 trophies in it and so forth and so on. And we came across, we don't know what it was, but it was so big it needed a saddle. And we both headed for the door at the same time, screaming and going, what was that? And that, that little bug brought us together, I think, more than <laughs> just about any discussion we ever had. And besides, when you go into an arena where there's been some differences between men and women, the haves and the have-nots, so to speak, when you bring someone in that makes you feel like the haves are gonna lose something, you're not gonna lose anything. You're only gonna gain momentum with um, alliances. And it's just so much better if you can get to a point where you can think and sit down with someone and say, you know what, I was only two or three opinions away from him anyway, or away from her anyway. And that's how you make something happen positive uh, from something that maybe has not been as positive as we needed it to be to move forward. And uh, the athletes, the coaches, you're wonderful, administration, wonderful. The athletes, all of you, and there's so many of you here tonight in different capacities, some in coaching, some as actual instructors in our physical education uh, program. Will Shaw, uh, you will forever be one of my best buddies. I, I certainly appreciate our relationship. And um, I think um, at the first picnic we had where Chuck and I served charcoal wieners, and I think, uh, I think, certain people took over who knew how to cook and uh, that was another success we had at the family picnics that Chuck and I never got to cook again but those athletes and the things that you have accomplished I know I'm, this is how my mind goes I don't have any notes and that can be good or bad it's going to be good tonight Chuck and I uh, both we seem to kind of go through the same life things at the same time hip replacement for me broken hip for uh, Chuck and uh, so I would like to leave with this statement of how I see the future 
of Athletics at Long Beach City College. And I love all your children. Oh, I forgot to say, all of you have children who are, I said, do you have any pictures? Oh no, he's in, he's, he's in college, Bridget tells me. He's out of college and they both have jobs. Oh my gosh, it's so wonderful. And all the children, I felt like, indeed, my family's back in South Carolina, you are all my family. But I leave this one thing with you tonight. And uh, hopefully you will remember this. Chuck and I with our hips, he broke his, mine's replaced. So I'll leave you with this one thought. Hip, hip, and yes. And Randy is in charge of the hoorays now, and I love you for it, Randy. I know you will lead us to many hoorays. See, I'm a healer. <laughs>